Hello, my name is Michael Hare, and thank you for watching today's episode of the Ed Talk. Today, our prompt is how might a translanguaging stance support self-efficiency with English learners? Um, to help us answer this, we are also given the quote, uh, if a student is able to write in their home language, you can validate his or her knowledge and build on it. Uh, this quote is from um, the book that we're reading currently in my class right now. Um, and it kind of gives a similar um, entailment to like the general question that we're having today. Um, so just to start off, translanguaging is when a student or person or persons uh, mixes languages. I like to personally call it code switching. Um, and this mix of language can be uh, written, uh, speaking or listening. Um, a quick example of one is if I'm speaking in English and out of nowhere I may throw in a random um, Tagalog or Japanese word just because that's how my brain is working. Um, it'll code switch or translanguage between all the languages that I know and in, in some of that, um, some of my sentences may actually include uh, a main portion of my primary language, which will be English, along with other languages that I know. Um, it's very common for ELs to do that while they're still learning English or whichever other language they are learning. Um, <clears throat> so after knowing the definition of translanguaging, we can actually look at how that might support uh, learning. Um, because obviously a bilingual or working towards bilingual or multilingual student will be able to hold a higher capacity for language and will have to hold it in two or multiple languages. Um, so just to start off, with any EL, no matter if they already know a little bit of English or not, it is important to know their culture. It is important to know where they come from. It is important to know a little bit of history about them. So a little research as an educator will never hurt you. Um, for example, if I have a student uh, of uh, Hispanic descent, I may put stuff out there that is of Hispanic descent, but I may also look in and ask them more personalized questions about specifically where they're from. Let's say, for instance, this student that I'm hypothetically making up is from Argentina. Let's say the student from Argentina, while they have a Hispanic background, they're going to be different than a student from Venezuela or Mexico. So I can cater certain things or create certain uh, tasks that have a little bit more Argentinian culture than I would for maybe just a general Hispanic task. Um, and of course that kind of goes in with home language as well. Obviously that student will be able to speak uh, Spanish to some extent depending on what level they are and um, what grade level they are in school. Um, with their home language, of course, we want to, as educators, back that up. We don't want a student to come here to the United States and completely wash them into only um, doing stuff in English. Because uh, if we do that, then they, then those students will lose their culture and a little bit of who they are and a little bit of their ancestry. Um, also, when looking at a student, it is important to look at their prior schooling. Um, some students may be too young to have prior schooling and that's fine. For that we could uh, talk to their parents and see if their parents have taught them anything. If not, that's totally fine. But let's say for instance we have a new EL from somewhere in Europe, let's say Western Europe, um, that has come to the States and has had you know, a good amount of schooling back in their uh, home country. You know, We'll be able to translate that prior schooling over to uh, what we're trying to teach them now, especially since we could build off a of background knowledge and kind of look at the curriculum they're building over there and um, use that to our advantage here in the States. Um, and looking at their prior schooling, 
obviously they're going to have like different language proficiency levels um it's good to look at how proficient they are in their home language and how uh proficient they are in english obviously if they're a newcomer their english language proficiency will not be that good or it could be depending on their prior schooling but we expect it not to be as good depending on where they come from but their language proficiency in their home language could be very well so for example um, you could have a student who understands something in their home language but when trying to translate it over to English has no idea what's going on that's a little bit of where trans languaging comes in because as they learn English they're able to quickly and more efficiently connect that learning from their L1 which stands for language one for those of you who don't know to English or the next language they're trying to learn whatever that may be um, and just to reiterate uh, the the quote um, if you're wondering why I just looked up there I thought I heard a knock at my door sorry about that but um, let's go ahead and reiterate that quote and maybe talk about that a little more uh, so just to reiterate the quote said if a student is able to write in the home language or their home language you can validate his or her knowledge and build on it um, so going from that that's specifically a writing example so let's say I have a student from Japan let's say they are in middle school and they can write in Japanese obviously they may not know every kanji but they'll know all the hiragana all the katakana and what i can actually do as a teacher is i can translate most of the words from english either into japanese or their katakana depending on um what is necessary at the time <clears throat> so i could build off their ability to write in their home language to teach my subject which for me would be math and for you guys out there it might be a little bit different it could be english and to build off of that of course you need direct translation and it's just a good thing to know that if your student can write then they'll be able to read because writing is one of the last thing that comes in the language pyramid as i like to call it the language pyramid where you go listening speaking reading then writing that's how i look at it um, so obviously if a student can write in their home language they should be able to do the subsequent actions um, thus I can build off of their writing ability and I can also take their writing ability and get responses out of it um, for other translanguaging things um, let's see here what can I think of there's not many I can think of besides translanguaging just supports our students who are ELs or maybe are still refining their English um, just because they can use their L1 and then go ahead and code switch it to English um, while I was in Japan there were some instances where a university student who was still learning English would speak in Japanese to me and then also speak certain words into English most of them were mainly nouns just because that's typically what they're taught first and a few verbs but that's kind of how you could get the other side of the train languaging view and that's about it thank you for listening to today's podcast and I will see you guys next time